Every day a podcast on Spanish historical topics, or of general interest, spoken in English. Legend of the Cristo del Cachorro, updated. Tradition tells that in the Triana neighborhood, on the other side of the Guadalquava, an image of the Virgin hidden at the bottom of a well was found at the end of the 16th century, where it was probably hidden by the Christians at the time of the Arab invasion. Quickly, she gained great devotion among the neighbors, who built her a small chapel based on arms in which they could honor her. Very soon, as was the custom in the city, a brotherhood was founded around the carving so miraculously found. In the middle of the following century another brotherhood was established, called Nuestra Señora del Patrocinio, an invocation very much to the taste of the reigning Felipe IV. Shortly after, in 1689, both brotherhoods merged, adopting the name of Brotherhood of the Sacred Expiration of Our Lord Jesus Christ and Maria Santissima del Patrocinio. At that time, he lived in the Cava de Triana, where the gypsy huts were located, a man of this race, about thirty years old and a handsome figure, well known for his ability to play the guitar and his faculties for Cantjondo, who attended by the nickname of El Cachorro. El Cachorro was a serious, taciturn, concentrated man, and when he participated in gypsy parties or in the revelry of taverns, he always kept away from the general merriment. He had not known love, but many of the gypsies of La Cava yearned for him. There was no shortage of those who spitefully affirmed that it was because he had a secret love on the other side of the river, in one of the stately neighborhoods. When he disappeared for several days, no one came across him on the roads, or in nearby towns or surrounding fairs, he could only be in one place, on the other bank of the river, somewhere that gypsies didn't frequent. Word spread that he had an affair with a young lady from a good family, and that her seriousness was due to the fact that the bride's family did not accept such dalliances. One day a richly dressed Hidalgo appeared in La Cava, asking everywhere for a gypsy they called El Cachorro. The members of this race are not talking more than necessary, and less than one of their own with a payo. However, the gentleman must have glimpsed something, because when he left Triona, he was convinced that the one he was looking for was in that place. From that day on he was seen prowling the neighborhood, sometimes on foot, sometimes on horseback, always well-dressed and with an obstinate manner, like a hunter in his stalking post. On the other hand, after the merger of brotherhoods and the creation of the new Brotherhood of Expiration, it was deemed necessary to provide it with headline images. Once the Cabildo de Cofrades met, it was agreed to arrange with a renowned artist the construction of a sculpture that represented the Lord at the very moment of his death. After several proposals, the commission was made to the best image maker in the city at that time, Francisco Antonio Ruiz Gijón. The master took this request to heart, proposing to make a figure that would stand out among the excellent carvings sculpted by his predecessors, who were artists of the category of Martinez Mantaines, Juan de Mesa or Pedro Roldan, there is nothing. This desire to excel led him to draw hundreds of sketches and dozens of clay models, without any of them fully satisfying him. He became so obsessed that he alone lived for this assignment, barely eating or sleeping, confined to his workshop day and night. He was losing weight visibly and came to seriously worry the family, when he fell ill and contracted a fever that, despite the opposition of those close to him, did not prevent him from continuing to try to obtain the desired figure. One night he suddenly awoke, struggled to his feet in bed, and on a sudden impulse dressed and left his house at the Puerto Real. He was walking at random, without a defined destination, and when he realized it he was in front of the boat bridge, the only connection between Seville and Triona at that time. He crossed it and continued walking until he reached the Patrocinio Chapel. He was fantasizing in front of the chapel door, thinking about how the carving he wanted to carve would look like when, suddenly, he heard loud voices and shrill women's cries. 
Turning, a horseman galloped past him, whom he could only make out was wearing an expensive silk cloak blowing in the wind. Guided by the screams, the old teacher headed towards the place from which they came, which was none other than the gypsy huts of La Cava, with the intention of helping those who needed it. Nearby, he saw the cause of that uproar. On the floor was a man writhing in pain in the last throes of agony. He seemed to want to say something, perhaps the name of his matador, and, raising his head, he let out with difficulty the throes of a breath that was ending. That man was the Cachorro, the gypsy who had fulfilled his appointment with destiny, paying with his life for his secret love. A rich hilt dagger pierced his body, from chest to back. Seeing him, Ruiz Gijon forgot the compassionate man, he carried inside and felt wildly and gloriously an artist, nothing more than an artist, and while the women tried to help the dying man, Ruiz Gijon took out of his pockets a piece of charcoal and a piece of paper, in the one who, in the light of the oil lamps, was sketching the agony face of the gypsy. Later the Kachoro died, his bloodless body being raised in the arms of some gypsies, who were arriving to take him to his home and watch over him. After that event, a short time was enough for Ruiz Gijon to transfer to wood the sketch he had made that night. Thanks to him, he managed to make the image have exactly the expression of agony. And when that year of 1682 the new image of the Patrocinio Brotherhood came out for the first time, the Triona neighborhood, upon seeing the Christ of Expiration on the cross, began to burst into cries of admiration and surprise. And indeed, it was the Cachorro, the taciturn gypsy, singer and lover, the one who was killed for love one night in the Cava de Triona, and that the breath of the genius of the great artist Ruiz Gijon had turned into the figure of the most beautiful and dramatic of the crucified Christs that formed the sculptural treasure of Seville's Holy Week. As an added curiosity, the carving presents one brown eye and the other green. The legend came to be completed with the investigation carried out by justice in which the truth was finally known. Indeed, the gypsy visited a woman every few days, although it turned out that this lady was actually his own bastard sister. The man, in an attempt to keep the secret for fear of harming her, given her origin, had been discovered and accused of those erroneous intentions. There is another theory, according to which, the nickname of El Cachorro was a denomination quite used by the literati of the Golden Age, and that it comes from the cub of the Lion of Judah. Curiously, the expression El Cachorro did not appear in past times to call this imposing crucified on Good Friday. Everything seems to indicate that it is simply something with romantic overtones, but that, over time, has managed to synthesize the deep devotion of the people of Seville to this Christ who, every Good Friday, if it doesn't rain, that's another, reminds us of the moment when Jesus expired. Within the legend of the Cristo del Cachorro there is a sub-legend, among the civilians, which affirms that the true Cristo de la Expiration is found in the Seville Cemetery, where he was secretly taken after the serious fire that the chapel suffered. In 1973, the original image was replaced by a replica made by the restorers. Between the Glorita del Cristo de las Milas and the Glorita de la Piedad is the pantheon of Don Anibal González y Alvarez Azorio, the architect par excellence of 20th century Seville, and especially, of the 1929 Ibero-American exhibition. The illustrious architect passed away in 1930, and his pantheon is undoubtedly one of the most visited places in the San Fernando Cemetery, due to the mystery that is kept inside it, which has caused a true urban brotherhood legend, as there are so many that circulate through our Seville so fond of the legendary and of mythification. It is an exposed brick construction, with a semicircular arch, which is closed with a black lattice gate, with small drawings that reveal its interior, with some difficulty. If you dare to look inside, I assure you that the first time always produces a certain impression, and direct your gaze to the left side of the Pantheon, you will find an impressive reproduction of the Cristo del Cachorro. Well, the Brotherhood urban legend affirms, clearly wrong, 
that this is the authentic image of the Kachoro. What's more, if you go there and ask, there will be some local employee who will affirm without blinking an eye that what you are looking at is the original carving of Mr. Francisco Antonio Ruiz Gijon.